In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the cross-tab table and the statistical test called the chi-square. Um, this chi-square test can be used and generally should be used to test the significance of the relationship between two variables, and I'll show you what that means and how to interpret it. Um, for example, let's say I wanted to know whether the relationship between gender and attitudes about abortion um, existed. So, in other words, um, looking into does gender affect or is at least gender related to attitude, attitudes about abortion. I'm going to create a new syntax file. And actually, since I do actually have an old syntax file, I'm going to open that one because um, there's several commands in there I want to use. I'm going to use the variable abany, which records the responses to a question asking people, um, should abortion be legal if a woman wants one for any reason? I'm going to weight the data by running the uh, weight that I created in a previous tutorial. And I'm going to first look at frequencies of both of the variables I'm interested in, frequencies for A, B, N, E, and for gender, which is sex. You can write as many variables after the frequencies command as you want. Here I'm getting uh, frequency tables, so I can see that uh, about 39.5% say that a woman should be able to, or abortion should be legal if a woman wants one for any reason, and 60.5% said no. Remember, I'm focusing on valid percent. Um, in terms of gender, uh, about 54% of the sample is female, and 40, about 46% is male. Um, remember, this is with uh, weights on because weight weight is on. And uh, now, so look at the cross tabs here of um, the first variable a b n e by gender. Usually, you want the dependent variable, that is the effect, to come first, and the independent variable to come second. The variable that comes first here, after the cross tabs, is the variable that's going to be in the rows. And the variable that comes second is the variable in the columns. If I do it this way, I'm going to call for column percent. And in addition to column percent, I'm going to ask for the chi-square statistic. If I run this table, um, unfortunately SPSS gives you a lot of information you don't need, but I should focus on the table in the middle. Here I see that 40.3% um, of men said that um, they agreed the woman should be able to get an abortion um, if, if she wanted one for any reason to be legal whereas 38.8% of women said yes to that question. Now, usually when you look at uh, the relationship between two variables in a cross tab, this is called a joint distribution, where you have two variables, not just one, um, you're not going to get a, identical percentages here. Just by random chance, there's going to be some differences here, and that's what the chi-square test or any statistical test will try to deal with. And the question is, are differences that you observe real? Can you really, uh, do you really have, is there reason to believe that these differences exist in the population, or instead are they simply um, likely to be due to random chance? Now, you can't tell with certainty whether this is the case, because random randomness, you know, by definition, is not something you can 
get certainty about, but you can get a certain level of confidence about it. In this unwieldy large table, the only number that you really need to focus on is the first row of the asym this stands for asymptotic significance column here, 0 .008. This is called a p-value. And the interpretation of this p-value is very important. The p-value tells you that, um, assuming that there was no relationship, if we assume no relationship, this is the probability that we would find a difference at least this large, that is 40.3 and 38.8. Um, so what is that telling us? That means that the lower the p-value here, the lower this value, the more likely that there is actually a relationship because remember again go back again if the p-value is um, in this case we're saying assuming there's no relationship what's the probability of finding the difference we found and if the probability um, is very low in that scenario then we can conclude essentially that we're confident there is a relationship so the rule of thumb here is to look at the p-value here in the, in the third column, first row. It says Pearson chi-square is a value, degrees of freedom, which you cannot pay attention to, and then the p-value, which you um, focus on. If this value here is less than or equal to 0.05, then the rule of thumb is that you say the relationship between these two variables is statistically significant, which means that basically the relationship is unlikely to have arisen through chance alone. Or uh, um, another way to say it, sometimes people say, is that there's um, we have a 95% confidence um, situation where uh, it does get a little bit tricky to think about this again, so I'm going to repeat it again. The p-value tells you is if there's if in the event that there was no relationship in the population, this is the probability we would find a difference this size or larger. Okay, and so the lower that number, the more likely that a relationship actually does exist. And there's a rule of thumb that 0.05 is the cutoff, so that less than or equal to 0.05 means that there is a statistically significant relationship. Um, I can do the same thing with just about any variable. If now I look at year by A, B, N, E, and in this case I'm going to call for row percentages, and again the chi-square. Again, I get a chi-square, and again, it's less than 0.05 here. The asymptotic significance column, the first row uh, under uh, labeled Pearson chi-square, this is less than 0.05, so I can declare the relationship between um, A, B, N, E, and year significant. Now, it doesn't tell you a lot, but it tells you something, and that is that the differences that you do observe across years are unlikely to have arisen through chance alone.